the last lesson, I created a room class. But a game with just one room would be pretty boring, so I now need to create lots of rooms and then connect them together to make a map. I'm Hugh, you're watching Code with Hugh, and this is another lesson in my complete course in adventure game programming. At its simplest, a map is just a collection of rooms. So what sort of collection do we need? Well, a linear list or array would do. Or some array-like class, such as an array list. Now, later on in this course, it's quite possible that I'll decide to use some other sort of collection. In the past, I've created maps in, in games in all sorts of different ways. But for now, I want to keep everything really simple. So here in C Sharp, I've declared a map as an array of room objects. The exits from one room to another are integers, which represent the index, that is the position, in the array of another room. So here, when s has the value 2, it refers to the room at index 2, with the first room in this list being at index 0. So to the south of the troll room is the cave, and minus 1 indicates that there is no exit in that direction. Let me show you this by putting a breakpoint here and running the debugger. And now I can expand the map to show the room objects that it contains. Now in my Java program I've made the map an array list, but really everything else is pretty much the same as in the C-sharp program. And again I can place a breakpoint in NetBeans and use the debugger to drill down inside the map and find the room objects that it contains. Now by this point in this course you have the basic features of a small and simple game. You have rooms with exits into other rooms so in principle you're ready to create a world that the player can explore. What you haven't yet got is any way of moving the player from one room to another. I'll explain how to do that in another lesson. But before I do that, why not see if you can program that for yourself? Think what you'd need to do. In a previous lesson, I showed how to write a main loop which can read commands entered by the user. What you now need to do is to get some specific commands from that loop, say n to go north, w to go west, and so on. You need to make sure that the game starts in a specific location. That is, the player needs to start out in a specific room. When someone enters N to go north, you need to check if the current room has an exit in that direction. And if so, you need to find the room at that index in the map. So if the N field of the room object has the value 1, then you need to find the room stored at index 1 of the map array. Then you'd have to update the current room so the player, in effect, moves into that new room. The game should then display the new room's name and description. Now, as you follow through this course, I recommend that you always try to keep at least one step ahead of me. Don't wait for me to tell you the answers to all the problems. See if you can figure them out for yourself. For instance, you could try out some of the other ways of creating a map. See what other sorts of collections are available. Maybe a, a dictionary would be a good thing to, to use in C Sharp, or in Java you could try a hash map. Then, in later lessons, I'll show you my solutions. Incidentally, if you're an experienced programmer and you want to move on more rapidly, you may want to download one of the Bitwise Interactive Fiction Frameworks, or BIF, which I wrote for both C Sharp and for Java. These frameworks give you a head start on writing games, and they also include sample projects. But be warned, they are big and complicated, and you might find them overwhelming at this stage. One thing they demonstrate nicely, though, is the possibility of using different data structures for maps. In the C-sharp version of BIF, I've created a class called RoomList, which is a subclass of Dictionary with a unique identifier as the key for each room. And if you're an experienced C-sharp programmer, you may already have come across dictionaries and you might, you know, you might want to try using one of your own in, in your own code. In the Java version of BIF, I've no map at all, since each room contains a direct reference to the other rooms at its exits. If you're an intermediate to advanced level programmer, 
in C Sharp or in Java, or indeed in some other programming language, by all means try out these sorts of techniques. But if all this is a bit beyond you, don't worry. Just stick to an array or an array list, as I've shown in this lesson. Thanks for watching. Now be sure to subscribe to the Code with Hugh channel and click the bell to get an email whenever I upload new lessons.